So we all know about Johannes Gutenberg and how the history of mass printing started, but only a few know that it occurred in East Asia 70 years prior to Gutenberg's creation. So what is Jigji? It means pointing at it directly. And when you're able to see your mind directly the way it is, that itself is Buddhahood. We want to thank the team for this project from Jigji to Gutenberg, especially the head of the preservation at the University of Utah Marriott Library, Randy Silverman, who put together a great team from the Library of Congress to the UNESCO to propose a new perspective in the history of printing. Hi, uh, my name is Randy Silverman. I'm the head of preservation here at the University of Utah's Marriott Library. And I'm here today to talk about a project called From Jigji to Gutenberg. The project is about changing perspectives on the history of printing. As Americans, we mostly believe that Johann Gutenberg invented printing in about 1455. And in fact, the invention of printing in Mainz, Germany by Gutenberg is a major event and changes the way information is distributed throughout Europe. But prior to Gutenberg, there is a long tradition of bookmaking in East Asia. An early example of woodblock printing, which is a different technology than movable type printing which Gutenberg developed, is the Pure Light Durrani Sutra printed in Korea in 751. This scroll was found in a temple that was damaged and in the process of repairing it came to light. And so what we know is that at least 700 years before Gutenberg, there was printing going on in East Asia. Another example from China is the Diamond Sutra, which is a woodblock print that combines images and type which was produced in 868. An extraordinary example of woodblock bookmaking occurs in 1236 in Korea. The work is called Triptychata Koreana, and it's a national treasure in Korea. It includes 81,000 woodblocks, which are currently stored in a light, airy building to keep them in uh, good condition. And when needed, these acted as a reference from which you could pull a section of a book and print it as with woodblock printing and distribute it. So it was um, a print on demand system that kept in one place all that was known about Buddhism at that period of time. And this predates Gutenberg's work by about 200 years. In Korea, the earliest example of types date from 1239. This is over 200 years before Gutenberg's invention in Europe. And they consist of a metal form that's created through sand casting. Sand casting could be attributed to Gutenberg as it was well known in Europe and East Asia. But to get the fine detail that uh, Gutenberg required for smaller characters, sand casting is a bad choice. So we think that's not um, a transferable technology, but we intend to find out what the, what the differences in the two printing techniques were. The Jigji was printed in 1377 in Korea and is the oldest extant example of a book printed from movable metal type. Only one example of volume two still exists, and it is today held by the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. In Europe, the typecasting system attributed to Gutenberg includes a steel punch, on the face of which is carved a single character, for example, a capital W. That character is then struck into a softer copper matrix, which is then trued up and inserted into a hand mold adjustable to be able to print letters of different widths, into which a hot lead alloy is poured to create a single character of type. The collaborative project from Jigchi to Gutenberg is 
going to do research to get information that is not available just by looking at the um, evidence left by Gutenberg or the printers of Jigji. So the chemical footprint of the production methodology will tell us something about the original materials, what the people were using, and the techniques that they applied. We're going to be using multispectral imaging and uh, X-ray fluorescence uh, analysis as means to discover the underpinnings of these early book structures. And for the first time, in fact, bring to light some of the, the hidden information lying behind the origins of printing, both in East Asia and in Western Europe. Both the Jigji and the 42-line Gutenberg Bible were included in UNESCO's Memory of the World website in 2001, an indication of their historic significance. Yet the Jigji, printed over 70 years before the 42-line Gutenberg Bible, remains almost unknown to the West. From Jigji to Gutenberg's goal is to uncover new scientific and material evidence about the origins of East Asian and Western European printing from movable metal type using non-destructive, multispectral, and XRF imaging at Stanford University's state-of-the-art synchrotron radiation light source. Relying on new scientific data, a team of over 30 collaborators from Korea, Germany, Norway, the Netherlands, and the United States will publish a book that addresses the historical context, cultural significance, and production technologies used to print the very first books from movable metal type. This publication will accompany an exhibit commemorating the 650th anniversary of the printing of Jigji in 2027. The exhibit will occur simultaneously in over 40 libraries in North America and Europe, beginning with the Library of Congress. Participating libraries will become witnesses to history, displaying for the first time a copy of a 42-line Gutenberg Bible together with an earlier example of a Korean book printed from movable metal type. This event is made possible by the international collaboration of historians, material specialists, conservators, and scientists who will redefine the question, who invented printing from movable metal type? The invention of printing is broadly accepted as one of the seminal innovations of modern civilization. Yet to this day, Korea's pivotal role remains largely unrecognized. In 2027, from Jigji to Gutenberg and its collaborators worldwide, will recognize the real inventors of printing from movable metal type and appropriately acknowledge Korea's accomplishment as one of mankind's greatest achievements.